Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what are my favorite theorems, a very biased collection as usual. Um, today is about, well, straight lines and, uh, well, a very nice theorem, Hari's theorem, which is very simple to prove, actually. It's not so bad um, from the early days of graph theory. And it's actually pretty surprising, I think. Um, in the end, well, if you see the proof, it's actually not surprising anymore. Um, but from the outset, it's actually a pretty surprising theorem. It's about graphs, it's about planar graphs. So let's just get started. So here we go. So a planar graph and a planar embedding is very different. So a planar graph, a graph is an abstract object. It doesn't live anywhere, it's just a collection of edges and vertices. And the only thing that matters is the connectivity. Um, so, but you can ask the question whether can, you can actually nicely draw it in, well, the plane, like let's say R2, which is exactly why it's called planar um, or plane here, and the so planar embedding. And there are many ways to do that. And from sometimes it's not so clear. So sometimes your graph looks like this and you need to rearrange the edges a little bit. So let me show you a nice Mathematica demonstration linked in the description. So here is a Mathematica demonstration. It's called, is this graph planar? Question mark. So to, to say it clearly, there's an algorithm to check that. But what I'm really up for here is a nice planar drawing of a planar graph. And that's not so trivial. So here, this graph is clearly planar. Um, there's not a planar embedding because edges cross, right? You want to embed it such that no, no edges cross. That's called planar. Uh, well, this is clearly planar. Just the embedding you see is not planar. And how can we see that? Well, I can just pull this vertex here, for example, to this place and this vertex here to this place. And you see, well, it's a very nice planar embedding and actually fits nicely to our theorem. And you can go here through uh, many more examples. So there are many more examples. Here's another one. Uh, not quite sure what to do with this one. Probably not planar. Let's have a look at another one. Um, this might be planar. So let's see what we can do here. Uh, maybe... We want to, so those two vertices appear to be the problem here. So maybe I put one of them on the outside. Um, we'll see. Oh yeah, so okay. Um, if I pull this one here inside, you can already see that it's planar, just the illustration is a little bit silly. So this edge here that goes all the way here parallel, uh, so sorry, from uh, bottom left to top right, um, I could pull it, kind of, if I pull this edge further to the side, which I can't do in this illustration, so just make this edge a little bit curvy and it will be planar, which is a very nice illustration of what we are going to see in a second, because that's not a solution I would like to consider. Similarly here for this graph, where this edge here in the middle, we just draw it on the outside in a little bit of a curvy fashion. And that's what we want to do. We are kind of looking for different realizations of a graph. Let's say it is planar. Some graphs are really not planar. We don't care about those, but let's say it is planar and kind of there are many of these and we kind of would like to have a preferred one in some sense. And that's what this theorem is all about. And in my little example, I actually failed. So planar embeddings could look actually widely different. So this is the same graph. Um, let me try to convince you. So this little box here is this little box. And this one, two, three, four, five, six little guy is this guy here and so on. But they look pretty different. Um, so planar embeddings might look really, really different. So the question is, there are many of them. So is there any preferred choice in a certain way? Are there preferred planar embeddings? And can we find them nicely? Um, as you have seen in the previous demonstration, the Mathematica one, I, well, I had this kind of example, the last one. And it was clearly planar, but um, all the edges were, at least from what I was able to do, it well, at least there was one curvy edge. And so let me just call uh, an embedding nice in a certain sense. If all edges are in this planar embedding are straight lines. So here, this graph G is actually the same as our little graph here, which is also G. This was a really bad G, give me another try. So this one is also a G. Just the embedding is slightly nicer for this video because all lines are now straight. And uh, they could ask the same question, can I do this for any graph? So can I always find the planar embedding if the graph is already planar, such that all lines are straight? And that's not so obvious. Remember um, the one in the demonstration 
where I really didn't see a really good way of doing it. I had a curvy edge in the end, which I was unable to curve because the demonstration was not perfect. But anyway, um, but anyway, so uh, this certainly was not a, a straight line embedding. So nothing we can really do um, in general, or at least it appears like nothing we can really do. So some graphs maybe have some nice straight line embeddings like this one, and some graphs just have non-straight line embeddings. Like maybe that's exactly the point, and maybe we need to make distinctions between graphs with straight line embeddings and without straight line embeddings. Um, but it turns out, and that's the main theorem, that that's not the case. And I think that's really surprising. So for every planar graph, well, simple just means it's not completely stupid. It doesn't have any uh, duplicate edges and no loops, something like that. But that's not a really description. But it can always draw it without crossings and only straight lines. So it can always draw it without crossings and straight lines. And this is called Fari theorem. And it is really surprising, actually. So here, um, after a bit of playing, you probably can rearrange this graph in uh, this way, but a really complicated graph. It looks really surprising to me that this is actually true, that you can always draw it with straight lines only. So you can avoid uh, doing these creepy operations. Well, it's not really a creepy operation, but you can avoid doing these operations. And I think that's very surprising. That's a very strange theorem, a very simple proof. And it can be updated in many ways. So you can actually uh, find like a barrett centric embedding where everything is kind of equally uh, far away from one another, and the stat embedding, and, and so on and so on. But um, I, I think it's a really surprising theorem. So you can always do it with just straight lines. I'm not telling you how to find those. That's a bit tricky. You know, as you just said, as so uh, earlier in the demonstration, I completely failed to find a, there was a planar graph, and I completely failed to find the straight line embedding. But there is one, and the proof that there is one is actually really simple. So and as soon as you see the proof, it's kind of clear that this has to work. And it's really related to just how you would to do it for this graph, actually, that you just kind of remove this vertex in the middle. You have the obvious triangle on the outside. You put it in, and so kind of induction argument, you put it in again, and you connect via straight vertices, straight lines. And that's exactly the proof. So it's a really beautiful proof and a beautiful application of induction. So you assume that you have some planar graph. Here you go. It's some planar nonsense. You remove, well, you can assume that it's triangulated, but event essentially what you do is uh, you remove one of the vertices. Huh? You get a smaller planar graph. You apply induction, so this is the induction step, and it gets you a straight line planar graph. And then you can just edit in, in the middle again and just draw straight lines. And that's a really cool argument, actually, and it's exactly how it works for this graph. And that's really simple. So induction gives you this, well, you can fill in the final vertex because you just put it in the middle of a face where everything is already straight line and you just fit it in by straight lines. And that's a very impressive kind of a very, very simple inductive argument, which kind of feels to me like it's very convincing now that the statement has to be true. But from the outset, I feel like it's very surprising. OK, so I think this theorem is actually very surprising, although the proof kind of makes it clear why it should be true. But if you want to play around with it, like take a planar graph and look for the straight line embeddings, it's not so trivial how to do it. So that's why I think it's actually a very nice and very surprising theorem. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I also hope to see you next time.